Hi, I'm Paris, and in this video I want to share with you the breakfast that I've been eating pretty much every morning since I started losing weight, and I believe eating this breakfast has helped me lose the 50 pounds over the past year. Just a reminder though, I'm not a doctor. Before changing your diet or lifestyle, you should consult with your doctor to make sure it's okay. All right, to start with, I don't start eating any actual food until 10 a.m. each day. This is a different video where I'll talk about this, but it's the intermittent fasting that I do. I don't eat after eight o'clock at night. Don't start eating until 10 o'clock in the morning. That way I have about 14 hours to give my body a chance to clear out the insulin from the day's eating so the levels can return to normal. And I believe that has helped a lot with my insulin resistance. But when I do wake up, I do feel hungry. I wanna put something in my belly, so I have tea. Often I will have this is from Trader Joe's, Moroccan mint green tea, or also from Trader Joe's, guess where I shop a lot, this Harvest Blend herbal tea. This one is actually a pumpkin spice type tea and it's really good. This Moroccan green tea has a little bit of caffeine which helps in the morning. This pumpkin spice type tea is herbal, so it doesn't have any caffeine, but it does have cinnamon, which gives it a pretty good zing. So what do I add to my tea to satisfy my sweet tooth? Certainly not sugar. And the artificial sweeteners, they each have reports coming out about how they can be bad for you directly or because they damage your microbiome. So this stevia sweetener, this is whole earth stevia leaf and monk fruit. Monk fruit is also another natural sweetener. When I was first cutting back on sugar, I'd use two of these little sweetener packs, but now I'm down to one and that provides enough sweetness. So at 7.30 or eight in the morning, I'm not eating yet, but I've got my cup of tasty tea with a zing and I nurse that along until 10 o'clock when I have my oatmeal. This is the commemorative hockey puck edition oatmeal. No, it's, they're all frozen like this. It's steel cut oats, which is the best for you because it's the slowest to be digested. But steel cut oats do take a while to prepare because they are bigger chunks of grain. So I buy this frozen version. It's already been prepared. I just need to microwave it for three minutes. This is another Trader Joe's brand, which is really the only place I can find this anymore. This is a brown sugar and maple syrups flavored, and there is a little bit of added sugar in this, which I'd rather not have, but I haven't found an oatmeal that I like nearly as well, so I do get a few grams of sugar eating this. Here's a nutrition panel breakdown. You can see seven grams of added sugar. So I take my hockey puck out of the plastic bag, microwave it for three minutes, then I start adding ingredients. Because I'm on a vegan diet, I add, for the proper fats, chia seed. Um, I do about one tablespoon of chia seed and about one and a half teaspoonfuls of flaxseed. Here's a nutrition panel for the chia seed. Here's what the chia seed looks like. Again, this is not ground. The chia seeds absorb the moisture from the oatmeal and um, they're pretty easily absorbable in this form. Here's a nutrition label of the flaxseed. I buy it already ground, though you can buy whole flaxseed and grind it at home. But the key thing is to grind it before you eat it or you won't digest it very well. And here's what the ground flaxseed looks like. Now this is something else I add to my oatmeal every day, just about one teaspoon of it. It's expensive stuff. <laughs> Funny thing is, this must not be from memory because I can't remember why I'm taking it. But in one of the nutrition books that I read early on in the process, trying to figure out what I should eat to improve my health and also lose some weight, this was rated very highly. I'm pretty sure it's for antioxidant properties, just like berries are very good for that. And it's close to about $30 a pack though, and that lasts me about a month. I should probably read up again on why I'm taking it, considering how much I'm spending on it. Here is most of the nutrition panel. The amount I use is about 20 calories worth each day. Here's what the black raspberry powder looks like. Gotta be careful not to sneeze or a dollar's worth of go spraying across the table. This does add a really nice color to the oatmeal. I'll show you when I get it microwaved up. The last thing I add to the oatmeal for flavor, sweetness, and the antioxidant benefits is this cherry and berry blend. Here's a nutrition panel. Key thing with this is no added sweeteners or syrups. And I use about one quarter of this package with each bowl of oatmeal. And the last part of my daily breakfast is what I mix up to take my supplements with. I'll talk about supplements in a different video, but it is a protein powder. This is a vegan protein powder. I add one scoop of this, which gives me about 20 grams of protein into a about 14 ounce glass. That's about half water and half unsweetened vanilla almond milk. I haven't found this particular brand in any stores, only online. And just like with all the foods here, I'll link to where you can find them in the description box down below this video. This vegan protein powder gets its protein from peas and brown rice. Here's a nutrition panel. This tub will last me about one month, a scoop a day. 
Why do I take up protein powder? That's really a processed food, which I'm trying to cut out of my diet, but I just found my protein grams per day were awfully low otherwise, like around 50, and maybe that's okay, but I was worried with the weight loss, not wanting to lose muscle, and so having a low level of protein seemed like it make that more likely. So I don't do any other protein supplementation. I mean, I try to eat beans and other things that I know have a fair amount of protein, but this is the only protein supplement that I add in, and it's once a day. And here's what the protein powder looks like. I don't really find it gritty, and the cinnamon flavor is actually pretty good. And here's the almond milk that I added to. This is a popular brand. You can probably find it in any supermarket. Lots of the almond milks or other alternative milks, if you're going vegan, are good. I like this one for one reason in particular. Lots of calcium. That's another thing I have trouble getting enough of with the diet that I eat. Calcium, iron, and protein. One more thing I usually have when I finish this breakfast, and I ran out of them yesterday. I've got to head out when I'm done with this video to Trader Joe's and pick up some more. Medijool dates from Trader Joe's. I know they have them at other stores and other varieties, but these were the ones that I just love them. When you get a really good one that's just perfectly ripe, it, it's like eating candy. And it does have sugar in it, but as I said in my previous video, the key to having the sugar is that it naturally occurs in the food. So it's mixed in with the fiber and everything else. It's not added on sugar into a processed food. And just like with everything here, I'll link to the dates down below this video so you can look at the nutrition information about them. And here's my steel cut oatmeal with the added chia seeds, flax seeds, and the black raspberry powder that gives it that really nice purplish color. Now I'll add some cherry berry mix to it. It's not an exact amount that I add. I tend to keep pouring until I get at least two or three cherries. They really are good. And then mix it all in. And here's my breakfast. No more than five minutes in the kitchen to get all of this ready. Don't have to start the stove up, which you'll find a lot of the things I eat have that in common. Just the microwave and the teapot. So I've got my tea. This lasts me from 8 to 10. Don't have anything caloric before 10 o'clock. Don't want to activate the insulin production and have the body have to deal with that, trying to give it 14 hours to take a break from it. Over time, improve my body's insulin sensitivity and reduce the insulin resistance that I've developed. As I showed you in my lab results in the last video, it has gone from 21 down to 12. The oatmeal is a hot breakfast, which is a nice plus. It's high fiber. It's steel cut oats. The add-ons that I put in give my body some different fats that it needs, which I don't normally get eating a vegan diet, and the antioxidants and nice taste of the cherries and berries. And then to keep me feeling full, I've got the protein in the protein powder added to the almond milk and water. Total cost to make this breakfast about $4 and less than five minutes in the kitchen. I am starving now because it's well after 10, so I'm going to finish this off. Then I will show you in my food tracker exactly what this translates to into macronutrients and micronutrients. All right, I've had my breakfast. That'll hold me till lunchtime, which is around 12.30. So there's only about two, two and a half hours between my breakfast and my lunch, which you might think is a little weird, but keep in mind I'm doing all my eating in a 10 hour window. The thing I like about it is there's no need for me to have a snack in between breakfast and lunch. So what does my food tracker say about my breakfast? It was 602 calories. Here you can see my fat percentage is 18%. I want to keep it 10% or lower for my specific diet, but by the end of the day, it will be. It's just that I front loaded some of the fattier things in the morning, the chia seeds, the flax seeds, the almond milk. You can see my proteins at 31 grams. If I didn't have that protein powder, it would be at 11 grams, really low. 23 grams of fiber, which is a good start for me. I try to get close to 100 by the end of the day. 23 is about what the average American gets for their whole day. And fiber, they've discovered the past few years, is very, very important, not just for your digestive regularity, but to feed your microbiome, the collection of bacteria that live in your gut. If you're feeding them and keeping them happy, you get colonies of bacteria that do you lots of good. Sugar, as you can see, are at 47 grams. Might seem a little high. They'll probably be about 120 to 150 by the end of the day. I do like sweet things, but I eat very little added sugar. That was the oatmeal, the seven grams. 25 of these 47 grams, though, are from the two dates. So that's breakfast. I really like it. I've been eating the same breakfast every day for months. If you get bored having the same foods, you can switch it up some with what you add to the oatmeal, different frozen fruits or berries, different teas, different flavors of protein powder. If you're worried about the grams of sugar, even though they are naturally in the foods, you can cut out the dates and cut those sugar numbers in half. 
I'm not sure which topic to tackle in my next video, whether to do another meal, what I eat for lunch, or to go on to what I think is the next pillar of importance in losing weight, first being the insulin sensitivity issue, which I discussed in my previous video. The next one coming up is about your microbiome and especially fiber. And then there's intermittent fasting and dealing with stress. A lot of topics to cover because they all relate to some percent to making you overweight and dealing with them to some percent will help you lose that weight. But by the end of this series, you'll know what I know and hopefully some of the points I've brought up will resonate with you, might help you out with your nutrition and weight loss. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out and I'll see you on the next video.